Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. In this video, we will be discussing chapter 18th of class 8 NCRT textbook that is pollution of air and water. Today, we will be focusing on air pollution. During or at the end of the class, the students will be able to define air pollution, define pollutants, define greenhouse effect and explain global warming. We all know that our environment is not what it used to be. Our elders always used to say us about the clean air and clean water that they had during their times. Now, in the recent days, we see lots of reports on news and on social media regarding the degrading environment. We ourselves have seen the falling quality of air around us, which has caused several diseases in people. There might come a time when the air around us will not be breathable and we all will suffer. In the previous classes, you have learned about the importance of air and water. In this chapter, we will be discussing how the air gets polluted. We can survive without food for some time. But without air, we cannot survive even for a few minutes. This simple fact tells us the importance of air. The air consists of mixture of gases. By volume, about 78% of this mixture is nitrogen and about 21% is oxygen. Carbon dioxide, argon, methane, ozone and water vapor are also present in very small quantities. You might have observed lots of vehicles on a busy road and these vehicles emit smoke. This smoke might have made you cough or might have caused discomfort in you. The smoke is not only emitted by vehicles. There are factories and big industries which emit lot of smoke into the air. Addition of such substances modifies the atmosphere. When air is contaminated by unwanted substances which have a harmful effect on both living and non-living, it is referred to as air pollution. Now let us understand how air gets polluted. The substances which contaminate the air are called pollutants. Sometimes such substances may come from natural sources like smoke and dust arising from forest fires and volcanic eruptions. Pollutions are added to the atmosphere by certain human activities. The sources of air pollutants are factories, power plants, automobile exhausts and burning of firewood and dung cakes. Vehicles produce high levels of pollutants like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and smoke. Carbon monoxide is produced from incomplete burning of fuels such as petrol and diesel. It is a poisonous gas. This gas reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of blood. Due to increase in the number of vehicles that run on petrol, diesel and other non-renewable resources, the amount of pollution has increased to a very high extent. During the winters, you might have seen thick fog that makes viewing things very difficult. This is known as smog. Smog is made up of smoke and fog that contains oxides of nitrogen which combine with other air pollutants and fog to form smog. The smog causes breathing difficulties such as asthma, cough and wheezing. Many industries are also responsible for air pollution. Petroleum refineries are a major source of gaseous pollutants like sulphur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Sulphur dioxide is produced by combustion of fuels like coal in power plants. It can cause respiratory problems including permanent lung damage. There are other kinds of pollutants too. These pollutants 
are used as chemicals in our refrigerators, our air conditioners and in aerosol sprays. They are known as chlorofluorocarbons, in short as CFC. CFCs damage the ozone layer of the atmosphere which protects us from the harmful ultraviolet rays emitted by the sun. Have you heard about the ozone hole? The ozone hole is not literally a hole, but it is the thinning of ozone layer over the Antarctic caused by the chlorofluorocarbons. Thankfully, less harmful chemicals are now being used in place of CFCs. In addition to the above mentioned pollutants, Automobiles produce tiny particles which get suspended in the air and when we breathe these suspended particles, it causes different kinds of diseases and damages our lung. These tiny particles reduce visibility and makes driving very dangerous. In the year 2020, more than 1,20,000 people lost their lives because of air pollution in India. The air when inhaled causes diseases. Such particles are also produced during industrial processes like steel making and mining. Power plants give out tiny ash particles which also pollute the atmosphere. You all have heard about the Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is one of the seven wonders of the world. And let alone, in the year 2020, more than 4.4 million people visited Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is located in Agra, Uttar Pradesh. The location of Taj Mahal has become a problem for itself. There are several industries located in and around Agra like rubber processing, automobile, chemicals and specially the Mathura oil refinery have been responsible for producing pollutants like sulphur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. These gases react with the water vapor in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. The acid drops down with rain making the rain acidic. This is called acid rain. Acid rain corrodes the marble of the monument. The phenomenon is also called marble cancer. Suspended particulate matter such as the soot particles emitted by Mathura oil refinery has contributed towards the yellowing of the marble, thus changing the color of Taj Mahal from white to yellow. From this we can say that air pollution is not only affecting living beings, but it is also destroying the non-living ones. The Supreme Court has taken several steps to save Taj. It has ordered industries to switch to cleaner fuels like CNG which is compressed natural gas and LPG which is liquefied petroleum gas which causes very less pollution. Moreover, automobiles should shift to unleaded petrol over the Taj zone. Now let us try to understand the greenhouse effect. You know that the sun's rays warm the earth's surface. These are small structures which are made up of glass. A part of radiation that falls on earth is absorbed by it and a part is reflected back into space. The part of reflected radiation is trapped by the atmosphere. The trapped radiation further warms the earth. You might have seen a greenhouse at the plant nursery. In the greenhouse, the sun's heat is let inside the structure and the heat is trapped inside the greenhouse that is necessary for the plant's growth. The trapping of radiation by earth's atmosphere is similar to a greenhouse. That's why it is called the greenhouse effect. Without this process, life would not have been possible on earth. We all would have suffered with extreme cold and life would be very difficult. So thanks to greenhouse effect, but then greenhouse effect is now becoming a problem for us. How? Excess amount of CO2 present in the air has become 
responsible for this effect. We know that CO2 is one of the component of air, but if there is excess of CO2 in the air, it acts as a pollutant. On one hand, CO2 is continuously being released because of human activities. On the other hand, areas under forest is decreasing. We all know plants utilize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis, thereby decreasing the amount of CO2 in the air. Deforestation leads to an increased amount of CO2 in the air because the number of trees which consume carbon dioxide is reduced. Human activities thus contribute to the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. CO2 traps heat and does not allow it to escape out. This increases the temperature on earth. As a result, the average temperature of earth's atmosphere is gradually increasing. This is called global warming. Other gases like methane, nitrous oxide and water vapor also contribute towards this effect. Like carbon dioxide, they are also called greenhouse gases. So now we know, because of the greenhouse effect, the earth's temperature is continuously rising because the heat is not escaping out to space. This is known as global warming. Global warming has become a serious threat to earth. Because of global warming, the earth's temperature is rising. So what exactly is global warming? Global warming is the long-term heating of earth's climate system observed since the pre-industrial period that is between 1850 to 1900 due to human activities, primarily fossil fuel burning which increases heat trapping greenhouse gas levels in earth's atmosphere. Global warming has led to climate change. Climate change is a long term alteration of temperature and typical weather patterns in a place. Climate change could refer to a particular location or to the globe as a whole. In polar regions, the warming global temperatures associated with climate change have meant ice sheets and glaciers are melting at an accelerated rate from season to season. This contribute to sea levels raising in different regions of the planet. Together with expanding ocean waters due to rising temperatures, the resulting rise in sea level has begun to damage coastlines as a result of increased flooding and erosion. The cause of current climate change is largely human activity like burning fossil fuels, natural gas and coal. Global warming stresses ecosystems through temperature rises, water shortages, increased fire threats, droughts, weeds and pest invasion, intense storm damage and salt invasion just to name a few. Is it too late to save our planet? Or still can something be done? If yes, what can be done? There are many success stories in our fight against air pollution. For example, a few years ago, Delhi was one of the most polluted cities in the world. It was being choked by fumes released from automobiles running on diesel and petrol. A decision was taken to switch to fuels like CNG and unleaded petrol. These measures have resulted in cleaner air for the city. There is a need to switch from fossil fuels to alternative fuels to meet our energy requirements. There are lots of renewable energy resources available and we need to make maximum use of it. These could be solar energy, hydropower and wind energy. There is already a shift. People are shifting from petrol and diesel vehicles to electric vehicles. There is lot of awareness given by the government in order there has been lot of awareness campaigning going all over the world led by young people like you to create awareness among people 
regarding air pollution, global warming and climate change. Small contribution on our part can make a huge difference in the state of environment. We can plant trees and nurture the ones already present in the neighborhood. Each year from July 1 to July 7, one Mohotsav is celebrated in India, where millions of trees are planted. Our government is making lots of efforts to make people shift to cleaner energy resources and is trying to provide and bring in innovations to provide clean and energy to the people of India. But this cannot be achieved in a single day, nor this can be done by a single person. We all have to join our hands together. We all have to work towards making our country and our world pollution free. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to wear your mask and always wash your hands. Thank you.